<laughs> I'm showing you guys all of my gross things. This is like enough to get me demonetized. What is up y'all, welcome back. So today's video is like the title of it is 100% in jest. I was putting together a list of things that I feel so compelled to share with y'all that I wanted to compose a video around them. And then jokingly to myself, my favorite kind of inside joke, I was like, this is like a khaki starter pack. <laughs> But essentially this is a top shelf video of my lifestyle things. The things that I interact with almost every day that make my life so much easier. Sometimes like I don't know what I would do without them in a very like shallow way. So I hope that y'all find this valuable. Before we jump in, I do wanna thank today's sponsor. It should come as absolutely no surprise at this point that I am proud to be partnering with Ana Luisa. I'm a VIP with Ana Luisa. I have been partnering with them now for years. And if for some reason you are unfamiliar with Ana Luisa, they are the perfect confluence to me of beautiful, affordable, sustainable, gold-plated jewelry. They are carbon neutral, water neutral. All of their pieces start at $39 and you can get 10% off with my link down below when you shop on site and they only use recycled gold. That's why they can create these beautiful pieces for the price that they're able to and there are styles for whatever mood you're in. I have tons of different style moods from minimalist and I want to be really delicate or very feminine to kind of hunky chunky maximalist, which is what I went for today. I have Ana Luisa pieces in my collection that accommodate all of those creative spirits <laughs> that might inhabit me. So I wanted to share with you all today some of my recent additions. The first one is the cutest little monogram necklace. It's an S. If you don't know, my little boy is about to turn two and his name is Simon. And there's just something so sentimental and lovely about having a really high quality piece like this that I can, you know, include in my stack and have close to my heart. I also, you can't see it, but I, I wore it to bed last night. That's how comfortable it is. I never take this thing off lately. And when I do, my kid finds it and hands it back to me. He's like, mama, <laughs> he's always styling me. It's terribly cute. But this is this beautiful medium necklace. You know, it's not super, super chunky, but I have more delicate ones. And this one's really sturdy. Everything about it feels super high quality without being, you know, overly heavy. And it goes with everything plus it has three size adjustments. So I can wear it as a choker if I'm wearing something open, you know, where it's gonna show. But that's what's sometimes kind of frustrating about things that are only one length is that they'll then kind of tuck themselves back inside your shirt. And this one has a long adjuster too. So it's like I can wear it on top of things and it won't fall inside my neckline. I also just got these earrings. They're this beautiful textured hoop. I just put them on underneath my plugs, but everything, everything except stuff that's been installed by piercers, like, and, you know, my plugs and stuff. It's all Ana Luisa. I wear it all the time. I shower in it. It has always stood the test of time. And this is not a real piercing. <laughs> I wore this in my LH Cosmetics video because Linda Hallberg has a septum ring. And this is just a little ear cuff, like an adjustable ear cuff from Ana Luisa that I had in my jewelry box. <laughs> and I just stood in there and I was like, okay. Okay, I don't need to go get a real one because like that looks legit and it's so pretty. Some called it a smiley face because I've got my double piercing right here and then just me, hello. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. But I felt like this was the perfect video concept to partner with Ana Luisa because they are really part of the khaki starter kit, right? I mean, so many things that you see and everybody's always asking, especially if they're new to my channel, they're like, where did you get this? Where did you get that? If it's gold and it's not installed by a piercer, it's Ana Luisa, full stop. So I encourage you to check out what they have on site. Again, you can hit the link below for an exclusive 10% off on site. And thank you as always to Ana Luisa for partnering with me for this portion of today's video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the starter kit. Okay, I, I do wanna reiterate, if you skipped the intro or whatever, the title of this video is a joke. <laughs> I don't think that anybody needs a khaki starter kit. It's just funny because it's like if I were a doll, right? Being like sold in a box, like these would be the accessories that I was sold with. <laughs> so 
that's where I'm going with it. That's, that's sort of the concept. Okay, so the first thing I wanna start with are my headbands. This is something I get asked about, I don't know, a couple of times every time I wear one in a video, someone leaves a comment being like, oh my gosh, please do a headband video because I wanna know where you get all your headbands. Well, it's actually not even that exciting because they're all from the same place. They're all from a designer called Lily Sadugi. Lily Sadugi makes these outrageously expensive headbands that you see everywhere. Yes, I paid for all of these with my own money. It hurts to think about it. Please do not calculate them. I don't want to know. It's just a retail therapy kind of thing and I love the visual interest that they add on camera and in life. Like, the fact that I was able to go neon nails, like neon lemon lime nails, match it with my sweater that I just got from Baba. I blame Hannah for that one. It's, ugh, mm, I followed them on Instagram. This came up and I was like, oh no, I have no choice. And this headband is actually kind of hard to match with but it has these neon lemons on it. So instead of using it to clash with, which is what I often do, I was like, wait. Yeah, so very expensive in a lot of cases, but I have gotten many of these on sale. I'll walk you through them here. So this one, I definitely got on super sale. I think it was like 200 and something dollars. I got it for 85 still. It's, I understand, like, if you think that this is a ridiculous thing to spend your money on, I totally understand, okay? <laughs> like, I know I'm going to get comments of people just choking and like, just, just being like, I would never spend that on a headband. I totally get it. But it's just kind of my own stake in the ground, like my personal indulgence. So anyway, this is commonly known on my channel as the Meghan Sparkle headband because it looks a lot like the headband that Meghan Markle wore when she got married, but obviously not as ornate, but also like extremely over the top, like Candyland, rhinestones and whatnot. And it's just a whole vibe and I love it. I love it a lot. The next one, I also got this one on sale. I think this was probably the most on sale that I found one, but is it not incredible? I got this one on Revolve, I think, and it's this beautiful, not quite red, kind of a carnelian color. And then it's got the beads all over it. It's kind of a tapestry. I love matching my makeup to this because this is a color that I wear really well in makeup as well. It's kind of a fjordsy color on me. So this one I find matches with a lot of things that I wouldn't expect it to. Obviously this is like the newest one that I got. Is it the newest one? No, this isn't the newest one. This is the second newest one that I had. This came out, I think like middle of summer and it's part of her, you know, tutti fruity collection. And it was one where I had like finger on the buzzer when it was released because I have a, a problem and her name is Citrus. I'm from Florida and I'm Italian, you know, so I go to Italy, my husband and I are both Italian. So we go to Italy and we're just like, oh my gosh, the lemons, you know? So lemons and oranges, cherries, I don't know. It's It was just a vibe that I needed to like occupy. So I love it. I love it. I'm very happy with it. I also like it because I am not one of those people who was blessed with luxurious hair. I'm grateful for the hair that I have. I do what I can with it, but I don't have this like, you know, Hannah or Amanda, like Maine, where they're just like, what do I do with all of this? I'm going to do blowout tutorial. Like there will be none of that from me because my hair is just like, Pfft. so I love having hair accessories, especially ones that are one step like a headband. This was, this was my most expensive one and I did pay full price for it. And I just, I cringe when I think about it. I'm obsessed with turquoise. I love it so much. And there was something about the photo on her website it was a girl who has much deeper complexion than I do, but kind of similar undertones. And she was wearing this with turquoise earrings, which as you can tell, I also got myself some, you know, turquoise looking plugs. I think they might be a ventrine, but they're not like bright, bright turquoise. Either way, I wanted to, I wanted to just give off the vibe that she was giving in that photo. I think that it's immaculate. And so I, I bought this and I just love that it's sort of neon. Like it kind of glows and I love it. So yeah, this is great for when I'm feeling especially loud. I have 
a Christmassy plaid one that's hiking around somewhere. I think it's, mm, I think it's in a cabinet in my room right now because I left it at a hotel and they had to send it to me. <laughs> that's how important these things are. I, I paid to have them mailed back to me. It was my first one that I bought. I bought it for our Christmas photos the year Simon was born and I was just like instantly hooked. And then I also, maybe this was the first one that I had. I can't remember now. Either way, these are like my first two and they're like the least expensive because they're unadorned. They don't have any um, embellishments on them, which of course is going to increase the price. But this one I think is all the time. It's $65 and it's one that they carry all the time. It's just this silk leopard print. That's a nice, I don't know, it's a nice like warm color palette that goes with a lot of things that, you know, like camel colored things, you know, richly brown and stuff like that. It's not too like funky, weird, cool toned where it just like would, would clash with things. It goes with kind of everything. I do think a, a good, like the right animal print is a neutral. And those are my headbands. <laughs> Those are my Lily Sadugi headbands. I do have some Lily Sadugi face masks as well as one pair of her sunglasses, but the sunglasses kind of fell apart, which sucks because they're like my fa they were one of my favorite pairs, but the screw fell out and like they're not really holding together anymore. So I don't know if I'd recommend buying her sunglasses, but the headbands are outstanding. They're lovely. I, I really, I adore them. Okay, we're just gonna stay with fashion for a second. I have a point to prove here. And that is that Jenny Kane's shoes are worth the price. I haven't tried a lot of luxury shoe brands, really. I wear a lot of sneakers. I have a pair of Birkenstocks that I've been wearing for like five or six years. But these are the Jenny Kane, they're her, just her mules. I had swooned after these online for a really long time and I was like, if I ever get a pair, it's gonna be the ones that have the animal print on them. Again, a good animal print can be a neutral. Y'all, I'm angry and also pleased to tell you these are like the most comfortable shoes I've ever put on. I ordered her shearling ones and they don't have this. They don't have the stretchy part and so they're not as comfortable. And so I sent them back because that's a really pretty penny to spend on a pair of shoes, especially if they're not perfect. When I say that these shoes are perfect, I travel in them. Now that does make me, and I know this is gross, but like I always think, yes, these are the most comfortable walking shoes and they're so easy to get in and out, get in and out of. I'm going to you know, always wear these for, for travel and stuff. And then I end up every single time barefoot in an airport, which is gross, okay? It's a gross concept and it happens to me all the time, but that's, how highly I speak of the comfort level of these shoes. Now, if you have like, you know, if you need arch support or something like that, they don't do that, but they are instantly comfortable. There's no break in. That's one thing that keeps me from spending money on something like a Tory Burch pair of shoes. I've had a few pairs of shoes from Tory Burch. She makes hands down the most uncomfortable shoes I have ever worn. Every style I've ever tried from her, flats, heels, boots, what have you, they all have, as my mother says, teeth. They have teeth and these do not have teeth. They are so unbelievably comfortable. I have obviously worn the heck out of them to the point that I have worn the actual like fur off the front, but there's still a cat skin underneath there. Like it's still, you know what I mean? Like that's not a quality issue. They can't change the nature of calf skin. But when these do eventually, you know, become unwearable, I will repurchase them. That's how important they are. So I can't speak to everything from Jenny Kane, but these are so worth it. If obviously if the style appeals to you, they're so, so comfortable and so well-made. And so knowing that, when it came to buying a pair of very versatile brown sandals this past summer, I went back to Jenny Kane and I paid full price for these. I didn't even wait for a sale because I was just ready to have a pair of shoes that I could count on. And I was like, all right, you know, my most comfortable pair of semi-fancy flats is from her. Let's see what else she can do. Again, if you need arch support, these are not gonna give you arch support. And walking around on anything really, really thin and flat like that, all day long in New York City, your heels are gonna hurt at the end of the day. It's just a fact of life, but they are so comfortable, so well-made. They fit my foot so wonderfully. By the way, this Baba sweater is just effervescing these tiny little fibers of wool and they're sticking to my lip gloss. So I'm sorry if I'm just like constantly pulling them off because I can feel them. I'm typically like a like an eight and a half, so I buy them in a 39 and they're perfect. This leather is so lovely. I have walked New York City in these, I, and by that virtue of that, I probably shouldn't just be touching the sole of them, but 
I have worn these, like, you know, walking on a trail with my son in the stroller, like miles at a time. They're like, wear them to a wedding. You know, you can get away with that and you can also just wear them on a casual day with whatever, like a, you know, pair of jeans or something. The only thing that I could see some people objecting to is that the toe is wrapped and so you're going to get that kind of like wear right there on the front. I don't care if things look pristine forever. Like that doesn't bother me. I don't mind that happening. They are just so awesome. They're so comfortable and I hate to say it, but they truly are worth it. And when I went into the city to meet up with Hannah and Simbri, we got on the train and they had just been shopping in Soho and Simbri was like, I was like, what did you get a Jenny Kane? And she was like, some sandals and I stuck my foot out. I was like, me too. <laughs> Cause I wore them on that trip. And yeah, I wore them all day. They are great. They're great. You can see I've put a lot of miles on these. And when I was in the city, I remember Hannah saying that is a fantastic bag. And she's right. But what she didn't know is that this bag is not new. This is a C by Chloe Mara bag. And it was a gift from my sister for Christmas a few years ago. And you're probably like, wow, that's a really nice gift. My sister buys really nice gifts. She's an incredible gift giver, but also this is not as expensive as you think it is. The Mara bag comes out every single year in a ton of different colors. I haven't seen this colorway again. It was hard to get my hands on and that's why I didn't end up buying it for myself. My sister ended up pulling some strings and, and found it. But you know, they're all like ballpark, like $400 for a high, like a really nice luxury leather bag that's not crazy, crazy. And when I say my sister got this for me as a gift, I mean, she got it for me for Christmas, I think in 2019, maybe? maybe 2018. I have had this thing for a long, long time. And it looks brand spanking new. It's wild. And I put it through some stuff. I took this to the US Open. I set it down on concrete. It doesn't even have feet, you know? I mean, granted the little buttons on the front are gonna get a little scratched up. Like that's just something that's gonna happen. But aside from, I mean, the hardware really hasn't even taken that much of a hit. I, I'm not super, super kind to this. And it's just an incredible bag. And as far as like what fits inside of it, it's actually limiting in a good way. I've got like a mask, my wallet, my sunglasses, a tissue, and like a receipt, you know, some miscellany in there. What else is in here? This is like a little what's in my purse. Now that's pretty much it. And that is good because when I used to always carry huge bags, they became the places where things went to die. So it's nice that I have something where it's like, I know what's in here and I know what's not in here. It's a fantastic investment piece that has, I mean, cost per wear, we're probably in the like tens of cents at this point. Like, it is just, I mean, I have other bags and this one just keeps making it back into circulation because it matches everything. It's black, it's brown, and it's orange, like it's camel and what would you call that? Like saddle and black and gold. It, it, it fits in every single outfit and it's a really great like crossbody. I love carrying it on the front as like part of my outfit, you know? Either way, it's just absolutely lovely. And I highly recommend the C by Chloe Mara bag in general. And I think, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but I want to take a modicum of credit for Hannah also investing in a C by Chloe bag right after that trip. <laughs> it's not the same one, but man, I would buy that one too. The one that she got is so pretty and I like it so very much. So good on you, Hannah. <laughs> okay, last thing, and I'll touch on this quite briefly, but as far as the khaki starter kit is concerned, <clears throat> probably the lowest cost per wear is Lunia pajamas. I'm wearing another set that I bought since the video that I made reviewing Lunia, it's called an empirical review of Lunia. And I show y'all outfits that I bought specifically for that video and also outfits that I've had for a long time and have seen plenty of washings and things. <laughs> Again, some not recently enough for the video. I just keep coming back. I'm wearing a Lunia tank top underneath this sweater. I wore this tank top to the US Open with a bra under it, you know what I mean? And just some white jean shorts. I, their stuff is indestructible, it's comfortable, it's cute. 
and I think that it's worth the kind of wicked crazy price tag because there are too many pajamas that wash like crap and their stuff does not, I haven't, I don't know about the silk. I don't own any of their regular silk, but their cozy cotton rib, their jersey, it all, their seamless stuff, it all washes like a dream and it lasts forever. And I'm just very pleased with those purchases. And my husband's like, well, when are you gonna wear that? I'm like, literally all the time, like an embarrassing amount. <laughs> it's, an embar it's, an, it's embarrassing how much wear I get out of my Lunia pajamas. Now we just have kind of miscellaneous things, which I think might be the most valuable part of the video because these are things that you haven't heard me talk about and probably haven't even seen unless you've just, you know, happened to catch like an Instagram story where I felt the need to be like, y'all, I love this thing, you know, and if not, like, it's gone. So this is the grossest bottle of all time. Oh my gosh, it's like been out in the sun during the day, during the summer. And it was also pretty old before I started using it because I like forgot I had it. I opened this up this summer and was so impressed with it that I won't use any other body sunscreen. This is, it's so gross. This is the Soleil du Jour Solstice Lager. Yes, it is inspired by the Stella Artois Solstice Lager. SPF 30 Solstice Shimmer Oil Sunscreen. It is a body sunscreen. And for whatever reason, there's still some in here. I've used this all summer long. It goes really far. It's a very like thin oil kind of serum -y lotion. I'll, I'll put a little bit on, just a little bit. Oh my God, it's so gross, you guys. I should have like cleaned it first maybe. You know that's not my personality. Yeah, look at it. <laughs> I, I like heard half of y'all go, ooh, just now. <laughs> so when you rub this in, it makes you look tan already. It's really nice. Like, it's so nice. It doesn't have self tanner in it, I checked, because there's something about it that makes your skin look so stinking good that like you kind of think that there must be some other medieval sorcery in there, but there isn't. It's just sunscreen that happens to look nice while it's on. And yes, that's all well and good, right? That's all a fantastic thing to have a sunscreen that also looks nice. But what I like about it is when you put it on, it dries and then it's dry. You don't have that weird sticky, icky, I'm wearing sunscreen vibe all day. Even the Supergroup Play sunscreen does that to me, where I just, I'm like conscious of it all day. Nope, this just makes me feel sexy. <laughs> like it's truly an exquisite formula to the point that I was a little heartbroken because I was like, well, it's a special edition in, you know, collaboration with Stella Artois, like surely they're not selling this anymore because they sent it to me last summer. They're still selling it. It's still on their website and it's so excellent. I would be picking up another bottle before summer's out because I'm afraid that they're going to discontinue it and it's awesome. It's, a, it's an immaculate formula. It's so good and it's worth every penny, but also it just looks awesome when it's on. I look like a tan goddess, which is something that just doesn't happen to me, okay? <laughs> That's just not a person I was born to be until this came along. <laughs> I'm showing you guys all of my gross things. This is like enough to get me demonetized. <laughs> I feel like I need to blur this out. It's so, actually this side's not too bad. The other side, you can really see all the hairs. This is my epilator and I have talked about how this is actually a medieval torture device because I have used it in places that you shouldn't use it, okay? I am someone who in most parts of my body where like I have, you know, more coarse hair and poor cell turnover, it's the theme of my life, I cannot do any kind of below the skin hair removal, but do enjoy a good long lasting hair removal of some persuasion. I just can't do it on my legs. I can't do it on my bikini area. I just have to shave. All that said, this has made it into my routine for two things. One, my underarms. It's a brief moment of pain for like, a week of not having to worry about my underarms. I am a person who does not like the feeling of stubble underneath my arms, and this grants me freedom for a very long time. You just go, ah, while it's happening, and then you're like, ha, ah, you know? And for whatever reason, I don't get ingrowns underneath my arms, probably because there's mandelic acid and AHA, other AHAs in my deodorant, so it keeps my, my cell turnover 
going. And don't mind this weird dry spot. This has nothing to do with selling the garment today. I don't know what is happening on my face right now. The seasons are changing and I had a ovarian cyst. I forgot to update y'all on that. I got my results back. I talked about it on my Instagram stories, but I didn't update the channel. My 26 day period is because I had an ovarian cyst and apparently it burst and normally that kind of thing would hurt. I didn't have any pain that I remember, but I did bleed for a long time, but it was just so nice. They did like an ultrasound. That part wasn't nice, but it was nice that they had results. Like he was like, hey, we, we found out what it was. And I was like, sweet. And he's like, we don't need to follow up. Everything's fine. And it was like, sweet. So to have an answer, to have a resolution is fantastic. So that's why, and that's also why I've been breaking out like crazy is because my hormones have been freaking out. But nonetheless, the other place that I use this, <laughs> another one that's like a gauntlet of just like, ah, and then it's over, is my upper lip. Because I am Italian and the hair on my upper lip is just slightly, it's like arm hair colored, you know? It's not invisible and I don't wanna bleach it because when I bleach it, it just turns bright yellow and it also irritates the heck out of my skin and that irritation will then make my skin more susceptible to melasma, another Italian girl problem. So I have just found that this is the best way to do it. That I tweeze in between here and there, but when I notice them kind of gathering here, I just I turn, turn this baby on, it's got a little light on it and it goes, that's exactly the noise that it makes. And I use it on like the medium setting, not the fastest. If you don't know what an epilator is, <laughs> realize I didn't even tell you what an epilator is. I figured you'd already know or had already seen that video. An epilator actually has all of these little tweezers. It's like the, it's the most like mechanically simple thing. They're like, what if there was a bunch of tweezers instead of just the ones you hold in your hand? And they all like, when they get to the top, it's like one of those fish games, you know, where it's like cir circling when you're a kid and you're trying to like, Catch the fish with the with your little fishing rod. Did y'all do that? I'll put a picture of it on the screen. I'm not doing a good job explaining it, but it's like that. And as they come to the top, they go, huh, 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 huh. And so that's what it does to the hairs on your face or anywhere. And it rips them out with reckless abandon. And that's actually fantastic because all I was doing on my upper lip was tweezing it anyway. So Hakuna Matata. That's, that's where this has found its way into my life. This wasn't very expensive on Amazon. It, I think to clean it, you pop this bad boy out or maybe you just replace the whole mechanism. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten to that point yet, but if you need your hairs ripped out in a big hurry and you aren't afraid of pain, maybe consider an epilator. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make this brief because y'all, not just on my channel, everywhere, y'all have heard about these things nonstop, but if there is anything that keeps my face on my, my face on my skin, help, help, oh no! My skin on my face from just entirely revolting, it's these two things. The light stem for acne, which I can use to like smoke one spot and it's a little stronger, I feel like, than the Dennis Gross mask, but it's blue and red light when you turn it on and it kills bacteria underneath the skin. I'm not gonna make any hard and fast promises about like cystic acne results or something like that, but for someone who has garden variety adult acne and is prone to picking, this is a much better way for me to feel like I'm doing something about it that I'm actually doing something about it instead of putting a wound on my face. So. This thing really works when I sit there watching something and just roast something for a good, like it cycles for three minutes, 10 times. So if you run this for its entire cycle, it's 30 minutes and you can cycle, you know what I mean? You can put this anywhere, it doesn't matter. I do it like on my neck and on my shoulders and stuff like that if I've got something, but you can't hurt yourself with it. It's just light. So it's not like you're gonna, you know, overdo it. You can turn it back on if it turns itself off kind of thing. It's just sort of a, a power conserving thing, I think, in case you like left it on, but fantastic. Also, I clean these with alcohol before I use them because I do feel like they would maybe do the opposite of what you want them to do if you're just loading them up with your own face bacteria all the time. I'm just guessing, I'm not a scientist. This is the Dennis Gross mask. Oh, by the way, that one is like 169, but I think that I got it on sale and you can find it on sale, like, you know, 15, 20% off. They go on sale on Sephora, Nordstrom sale, you know, things like that. It's a good time to get them. There will be sales on Dennis Gross as well. Like I didn't get this during the sale, but I should have. So this is the Dennis Gross LED mask. It's got three settings on it, red, purple, 
and auburn. And the red is anti-aging, the purple is anti-acne, and the auburn is if you wanna treat both at the same time. I find that this is not quite as like, aggressive maybe as the light stim, but it is very good for healing. Just really good for a, a chill routine that heals your skin and does help with anti-aging. It's just, you know, it's got basically the anti-wrinkle, which the light stim also has a light stim for wrinkles, and then, uh, and then also helps with the adult acne. So sometimes I just run it on Auburn, you know, just as like a, as a maintenance thing. It's pretty gentle, I feel like. It's not a very aggressive kind of solution, but I also find that it's a pretty easy thing to integrate into my routine. And that bad boy is like $435, so <coughs> bought it with my own money. Two more things. This is like the first thing that popped into my head when I thought about like the khaki starter kit. Daily Harvest. I, I took the bait essentially of all the influencers who were being paid to market Daily Harvest on their channels. At first I was like, that's stupid. I can make my own smoothies. Then I had a baby. You don't have time and you don't have bandwidth. Your brain is not in the building, okay? Lack of sleep is a you know what. And there's just no getting around it. You need things to be simplified. The times of day where you need to eat just sneak up on you so fast because you're so concerned about feeding uh, this other organism that you just created. Anything that simplifies a meal, incredible. Plus, I used to go and get a smoothie every single day when I lived in Austin because they had these really great smoothie bars where everything was crazy fresh and organic and amazing and I liked the people there. It was just a, a thing for me. I started going there right when I moved there and it was just a, a ritual for me. Well, I moved, moved to New Jersey and there's not really, in this little town that I live in, there's not really any like organic uh, crunchy juice bars. So, Daily Harvest is a really great solution for it. I will probably never take a sponsorship from them because I have had some issues. I didn't personally have the crumbly stuff made out of leeks. Sounds gross anyway. Their food is not that good, but the crumbly stuff made out of leeks apparently sent people to the hospital with some sort of like ga gastrointestinal issues. I didn't have that. I've only ever really liked their smoothies. Some of the stuff is okay, but like not worth the money to me, but the smoothies are excellent and they're really what I, like my whole routine hinges on. Right now I'm obsessed. I'm hooked on the mango papaya pineapple ones. Like that's the only thing that's in my freezer right now from them. I was buying different flavors for a long time and like that's the one that I just can't stop. It's like a dull whip, it's so good. The other thing, and this isn't really their fault, but I will say their customer service is amazing. They, first of all, they have a text system, okay? That's amazing. Like, and they actually text back and they're really nice. But also they're, eager to compensate you. They're one of those like unicorn companies that's never been profitable and they're like, we've got funding, have some money. So uh, anytime I've had an issue where something was either damaged or not included or whatever, they've been like, hey, sorry about that, we'll replace it and then here's a credit for like 20 bucks or whatever. One thing that was weird that happened was one time my husband was, uh, he loves to break down boxes. It's like, he's one of those dudes who's just, he like as soon as he became a homeowner and a dad, he went into full homeowner dad mode. Like he is all the memes. He's like, you know, up in the morning, ready to mow the lawn. He is the guy that's constantly cleaning the pool. He's the one who like kind of dozes off in a chair and he's like, I'm just resting my eyes. Like it all happened at once. And one of his things is like, he's obsessed with recycling and he's obsessed with breaking down the boxes and maximizing our recycler space. And so he was breaking down my cardboard box from Daily Harvest and he found a dead mouse in there. And it was a package that I had had. Some of the actual smoothies were like broken and open. And I thought that they had just been like, you know, damaged in transit and I had already contacted them. And I was like, hey, I don't really know what happened, but like three or four of these smoothies are like busted open. They were like, oh my gosh, you know, compensate, compensate, help me out, you know, quick response, all this stuff. And then I was like, wait a second. Like my husband came in and he's like, there was a dead mouse, like a frozen mouse in there because it comes with dry ice in it. I wrote to them and they were like, do you have a picture of it? And I was like, I don't. <laughs> And I realize how that makes me sound like I'm lying because I don't have a picture of the mouse because my husband saw it. I believe him, but he also didn't take a picture of it. So yeah, mice happen, things happen. I'm not necessarily faulting them for it, but 
when you take a sponsorship from a company, and I'm only talking about this because they're so well known in the influencer space, they sponsor a lot of videos. When you accept a sponsorship, their reputation becomes your reputation, which if it happened after the fact, that'd be one thing, but I can't go into a sponsorship knowing that there was a mouse in my package one time, you know? There's just, I can't do that. So anyway, I still order from Daily Harvest. There have been so many moments where I was like, ah, you know, I think it's time to find a new smoothie company because there've been a couple of weird red flags. I still order from them because their smoothies are delicious. I drink a Daily Harvest smoothie. Actually, I do two at a time. I make like a gigantic, like 32 ounce jar of smoothie every single day. Yes, I do. Uno mas solamente. The newest addition to the Kagi starter kit, my Nintendo Switch Mini. Oh my gosh, y'all. I went on my Instagram, I was like, do I need one? And a few people messaged me so emphatically about not only that I need one, but what games to get. And they were like people that I really trust that I I had this moment where I was like, I don't need to be spending that kind of money on a video game. And then I thought to myself, I was like, okay, if I can find some way that it's not going to like bust my budget to do it, I'm gonna do it. And then I went on to Teespring. They just call it Spring now. And like, I hadn't checked in on my merch earnings in a really long time because I make like a few bucks every time somebody buys something for my merch that I made. And man, the Fjord sweatshirts bought me a Nintendo, guys. So thank you. Thank you if you have a Fjords shirt or any of my merch because you helped. You helped me with my mental health. And I am not exaggerating when I say that. I have not found a good way to downregulate in a long time. I, I find that even when I set aside time to relax, I still need to be doing something and it still puts me in this like frenetic headspace. Y'all know the like millennial trope where it's like, well, if I'm gonna meditate, I gotta make sure that I'm doing, like I'm the best meditator in the world. You know, how can I optimize my meditation? How can I monetize my meditation? Because we have just been sickened in the head by capitalism since like moment one of our entire existence. I could go off. I could go off. I could go off just the way that it influences all of our thoughts and actions. But let me tell you, there's an antidote and its name is Animal Crossing, okay? And I'm late to this game because when everybody was buying Nintendo Switch minis during the pandemic in 2020, you couldn't get one. Everybody was talking about how great Animal Crossing was and I was like, I can't, I can't find one. You know, I just can't find one. And I used to have a DS and I played Pokemon and I played uh, Ocarina of Time on it. And so I knew I liked the routine of it, but I was like, is that a good use of my time? Well, guess what it has replaced in my life? Doom scrolling. Yeah. And you know what it does? It makes me dream about little kawaii animals and crafting things instead of dreaming about whatever demented memes I posted to my stories the night before. Even if I still post the demented memes, which I do and will continue to, still, I wake up in the morning and I'm just like, eee. I wonder how the little folks on my island are doing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's something really positive that it does for my mental health to go into this little island. It's like it's dialed into perfection. They're like, oh, do you need a satisfying way to occupy your mind instead of doom scrolling? That's it. literally, I feel like exactly what this was made for. And that's exactly what Animal Crossing was made for. So I also have Katamari Damashi and I have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, but I have started Katamari and it made my hands hurt <laughs> because I'm just like out of practice. And I haven't even opened Pokemon yet because I just love Animal Crossing so much. So I thought that I would mention that and I wanted to say thank you for the people who insisted that I get one. This has been actually so incredibly positive for my mental health, especially because, you know, you, like I think as kids in my generation, my parents were like, you can't have video games because they rot your brain. Guess what rots your brain a lot worse? Doom scrolling. Social media, okay? I'm already doing incredibly low vibe things. This is actually a step up as dystopian as that is. So I, I'm happy about it. Wow, y'all, I made it through that whole video with my headband on. How about them oranges and lemons and cherries? So I hope that y'all enjoyed this. Even if none of these things appeals to you, you can at least get a glimpse at the things that bring me happiness and joy and that I feel like 
really ground my everyday and the things that I have found through experience and spending my own my own money in every single case. Every single one of these things was bought with my own money. None of those was PR or sent to me by a company or anything like that. No gifting, nothing. I'm able to tell y'all like the things that really, really make a difference in my in my daily life and you know, it's like the khaki, the khaki starter kit, so. That's my lifestyle top shelf. I hope that y'all liked it. If you did, let's make it official and like it down below. We could even make it long-term official and y'all can hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Before we go, I do want to encourage y'all to hit the link down below to get 10% off at Ana Luisa. They have the most beautiful stuff. I am clearly in love and I wanna thank them for sponsoring this video. And I love y'all as well. Thank you for watching and for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.